Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Mary Mendenhall. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, The Wrong Side of Eternity, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or if you guys want to get everything that Mary has to offer, do yourself a favor and go directly to her personal site, marymendenhalletc.net. There, not only will you find more information on Mary herself, you'll find more information on this book, The Wrong Side of Eternity, as well as find more information on her other book, Michael and the Ice Princess, A Mystical Romance. And of course, there'll be hyperlinks set up to take you to the purchasing page. So one more time, that's marymendenhalletc.net. And I will say, Mary was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business. Author Reputation Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, move it through ARP. You can find them at authorreputationpress.com. First and foremost, Mary, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? Thanks, Benji, for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, listen, we appreciate having you on where I think a book of this magnitude is so timely because it's easily something that so many people in our community can resonate with. Now, I know we have so much information to cover, Mary, so let's hold off slightly before going into the book. Talk to our listening audience a little bit more about yourself, please. Well, I'm a very well-traveled person. I grew up um, all over the United States. I learned to talk in Minnesota. I was born in New Mexico, and I grew up in Northern California. But I set my eyes very quickly on service um, career, um, helping other people. I became a nurse and um, subsequently a missionary uh, through the um, Episcopal Church. But I was preparing myself the whole time to do cross-cultural work and ended up doing 12 years of mostly development work overseas, giving people skills and empowering them. Um, I taught music, I taught drama, I taught uh, spirituality, and I taught basically the life skills. So um, I've also learned a heck of a lot everywhere I went. So that's a really brief capsule of my life and direction. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing. What an impressive resume and such an eclectic background. We're going to have to have you back on the network again, Mary, just not even to discuss your other book, just to discuss your background and really all of the journeys that you have taken uh, with your traveling experience, because I'm sure you have stories for days and we'd love to just sit down and hear them. So thank you very well, much. Well, that, that word eclectic kind of nails it, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> Well, pretty all over yeah. absolutely well thank you very much for sharing now mary without further ado the wrong side of eternity tell us a little bit about your book it made me write it benji i was living in uganda right next to the rwandan genocide when i finished my first book and um people my neighbors entrusted me with their stories about what life was like under idi amin back in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. And um, I listened to them, and I thought they really need their stories told. So I was um, actually, you know, praying and trying to sort through my own terrible, horrible feelings about the genocide between the Hutu and the Tutsi in the mid-'90s when I was living right next door. And I thought, I have to write this story. It has to be told. So um, um, it is about the sufferings that people went through, both in East Africa and also through the uh, eyes of the Westerner that goes to help them, Stephen O'Connell, um, how it challenges their faith and their sense of purpose and their relationships. So it's both stories. It's both Stephen's story as he grows through the crucible of suffering alongside of them as an observer of this, and also the stories of the Ugandans who, and East Africans who have suffered so greatly and been so innocent right through it. So it's uh, it's a uh, a tale about suffering and how it matures us or not. <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. you, that it can have a 
uh, an effect to help us grow and help us be kinder to one another, wanting to prevent future suffering. Now, Mary, talk to our listening audience about the title. Now, really, first and foremost, why did you choose that to be the representation for your book? I did not choose it, Benji. It chose me. Um, I'm, I know that it sounds weird when authors say the book made me write it, but the, the title was there from the beginning. And um, it's interesting for me to hear readers talk about what the title means to them and how they perceive it, you know, that he's living on the wrong side of eternity. But it basically has to do with someone's worldview, how they see the world, and the fact that we so often choose, even people of faith choose, to see the world through um, through labels and putting people into boxes. Um, so the wrong side of eternity has to do with our limiting our appreciation for one another because our worldview is narrow. That's mm-hmm. my idea, but like I said, the title means different things to different people. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Please find your own meaning in it. I think that's great. <laughs> no, a- absolutely, Mary. You know, and it's so interesting hearing you articulate that because for me, when I, again, when I was doing the research, preparing for this interview, and I came across that title and read a little bit more about the book, and then especially when it was re-impressed uh, through our discussion discussion on the pre-screening call, you know, we're talking about labeling, right? And really, the this the negative effects of labels and what it puts on individuals as well as communities and that title the wrong side of eternity really like truly when i first heard it i thought instantly of the holocaust right and how Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that particular time is going to be infamous like it's not ever going to be forgotten as well as so many other instances as you're talking about in this book the genocide that took place in rwanda now It's something for me that I guess I just hit it more right there on the nose in terms of, listen, history is always watching and you don't want to be on the wrong side of it. And by creating these labels, perpetuating these narratives and really pushing that forward, you're on the wrong side of it. And that's how I took it. So I right. love the fact and, that you yeah, left that and, open and for interpretation. I'm, I'm, direct, I'm directing the narrative both at people who have suffered mm-hmm. from labels pasted on themselves you know, either correctly or not, or, but I'm also addressing people that, that, that throw labels around, and we've gotten very good at that, Benji, lately, you know, we, we throw people into boxes according to the color of their skin or their gender all the time, and I think it's become so commonplace that we, we don't aware, we're not aware of um, how much effect it has, so I'm also writing to people who have suffered from that. Absolutely. And that, I think, is truly where the power of this book lies. As I stated, it's something that can easily resonate with so many people. And it's something that is still happening in today's. I mean, we have don't look any further than our political climate right now and how much division there is within the political climate. Regardless of whether you're right or you're left, there's just that label in and of itself of right wing, left wing. And because if you're on the right or because you're on the left, I refuse to see you as an individual with varying opinions. Therefore, you are opposite of me and we are in conflict, right? So I I, I think that this is such a timely, timely book, Mary. No. Well, well, we talk about right. We talk about right and wrong side, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, and we think it's a matter of the position we hold or the beliefs we have or our opinions. That's what we think is right and wrong. But I'm trying to take a huge eraser to that whiteboard and say, no, 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 no. Just the fact that we, we, you know, we take a position, uh, we have to reexamine that. We have to look from someone else's point of view. Absolutely. So I, I do write from a multiple uh, points of view in the book, and I, I think I've managed to succeed in that because I've covered quite a few people who believe very differently about things and given them a voice. So it's an, it's an interesting mosaic, if you will, of beliefs and, and opinions. Mary, before we go any further, please articulate to our listening audience some of the awards that you've received from this book. Well, I, uh, I got the Pinnacle Award, subsequently the Book Excellence Award um, people, and the Best Book Award people recognized it for multicultural fiction in 2017 and 2018. So I'm pleased that, you know, it seems to have managed to 
um, attain a high quality status because I I took such care and such time in writing it, wanting to be faithful to the story. That was my motive um, in writing it. So I, I gave it the best shot I had, but I'm glad that it was recognized for quality reading because I, you know, who likes junk? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Again, here in the line with Mary Mendenhall. We're discussing her fantastic book, The Wrong Side of Eternity, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her personal site, marymendenhalletc.net. Now, Mary, I'd love to go into the concept of inspiration. Now, we know really what inspired you to write this. Right? And as you stated, during your travels, you heard all of these varying stories from members of the community in which you were surrounded by, and you wanted to make sure that their stories were told. So thank you for articulating that. Now, this is not the only book in which you've written. So what inspired you to embark upon a creative journey and become a writer? Oh, gosh, Benji, I've been writing since I was in third grade. My, my <laughs> teacher gave me a workbook because he saw that I was interested in the written word, and um, I, I dabbled in writing my whole career. Even during my years in nursing, I was writing newsletters and poems and short stories, and um, some of the short stories that I wrote um, just out of, out of my head were so powerful and had such an effect on me, so I, I consider that whole creative process, the, create, the creativity itself as a teacher. It's not like, well, I guess for many authors, it's you make things up and you, you command the plot, but in my case, the stories teach me. They come to me. I write them down. I try to frame them as best I can. But they're, they're thoughts and they're ways of communicating things that really are beyond words, things that have to do with faith or relationship or love. And I've studied the social sciences, anthropology and sociology and psychology. So I know the, you know, the academic version of that. But, you know, how do you how do you convey things through words that really are life-changing? So I think, you know, I have to credit the stories for choosing me <laughs> um, as, as their agent or their, their conduit as mm -hmm. opposed to setting out a, on a career to be a writer. So lots of practice. I don't feel, you know, like I am an expert except in experience. So I try to put the experience of myself and others into words that can bring the richness of that to other people. But um, basically, I started writing a long time ago, and I, I guess I'll just continue. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And Mary, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon the journey? Uh, I think the... I've gotten a few big compliments, but one of the biggest compliments I had, I had a, a Ugandan pastor read the first chapter, which I, I have to say, please don't read the first chapter at night because it's, it's rated R and it's pretty traumatic, uh, but the whole book isn't like that. There's some comedy in it, too. Um, and he said to me after reading the first chapter, he goes, Mary, this is our story. And that touched me deeply because that's exactly what I wanted to um, put into print is their story. And everything in the book that happens has happened to people. Um, it's, it's of course, in a fictional frame. So you've got changes in names and places, and some are fictional and some are not. But um, everything happened. And the compliment that he paid me is like, thank you for telling our story. But uh, the other thing that surprised me was how attractive the quality of ambivalence is. My, my protagonist, Stephen O'Connell, he has many doubts, not sure about what he believes, and he's always wanting to learn. But, you know, that ambivalence only fuels his ability to serve and bless other people. So those two things surprised me, I think. And guys, listen, as I stated, that's not all. OK, that is the main book that we really wanted to focus on today for this interview. That was the anchor. But as I stated, 
She's written another book called Michael and the Ice Princess, a mystical romance, also available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her site, marymendenhalletc.net. Now, Mary, since we have you here on the line, we have a few minutes left. Quickly talk to our listening audience. Give us a brief synopsis of your second book, please. Well, the um, the subtitle on Michael and the Ice Princess is A Mystical Romance, and that's to distinguish it from being a Harlequin romance. <laughs> <laughs> the romance is a spiritual one, and the quest, it's a quest story of a young woman who's, who's cursed from birth and how uh, reconciliation and forgiveness breaks that. And it's all about, it's set in a, a fairy tale kind of framework, but it, uh, it's, it, gives the teaching of some of the great mystics of the Middle Ages um, all the way up to the present. So both Catholic and Protestant and Orthodox, all of those um, mystics, which don't always end up in medieval fantasies. But in this book, they sure do. So uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual romance and um, a lyrical story, fairly short, um, comparable to some of the stories of George MacDonald. Anyway, it's it's a spiritual quest story and delightful. It's a good bedtime story. <laughs> Fantastic. So definitely a nice switch, good contrast uh, from the other book, The Wrong Side of Eternity. Mary, last question as we tie up this fantastic interview. I'd be doing my listening audience a disservice if I didn't ask this next one. Now, being an artist myself, I love having this platform to really be able to pay it forward, in a sense, to other artists that are out there that are listening in, and writers specifically in this instance. Now, Mary, you're someone who has written two books, have gotten it all published, gone through the entire creative process. Hopefully, there's more on the horizon. But articulate to our listening audience any new writers that are out there listening in. What advice would you be able to give them? Well, I think everybody needs a cheerleader. You're going to want someone to bounce your ideas off of and, you know, read your drafts and give you honest feedback. I think that's really important. And I think someone that um, shares your your passion uh, for the book's message is a good choice, not necessarily your best friend. Um, I I got some cheerleading from respected authors that I knew, Elizabeth Sherrill and Henry Nowen. Uh, but I, I wish I had an agent. I, I really do. My agent was hit by a truck. So oh <laughs> I had to goodness. sort of go into the indie route. And that's a complicated thing. Uh, it's a competitive world. So I would just recommend that people take their time. They choose a good representative, someone that's going to um, – you know, stand behind them as opposed to just a business partner. Mm -hmm. So I think that search is important, but also just being willing to um, make changes for the, for the reader's sake is a good thing. To, and also not settling for uh, just simple formula, but going for quality that that's probably the biggest um, recommendation I can make. Absolutely. And great words of wisdom, great advice there that you've been able to share guys. Listen, what more can be said? You know what you got to do. I mean, these books, as we stated, are each so unique and so different, but fantastic in its own right. Make sure you head on over to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, MaryMendenhallETC.net and pick up your copies of each one. The Wrong Side of Eternity is something that is a very difficult subject to broach upon, but it's a discussion that we need to have. We need to bring awareness to this. And now Mary is talking from a very specific circumstance that happened in Africa through the community in Rwanda. But at the end of the day, guys, as we've already stated, this is something that we can look throughout history and find it happening again and again. And really, the question you have to ask yourself is, when will it stop? And I think that the way we start to really dismantle that and the way we stop it is by bringing the awareness. Because once we start to bring awareness to it, we'll start to see the connections everywhere. And as she stated, a lot of times these things may happen where people aren't even aware of what they're doing. They're not even aware of the labels that they're placing on others 
because they're just caught in the commotion. They're caught in the momentum of what is going on. And this is why this topic of discussion is so, so immensely important. So one last time, here on the line with Mary Mendenhall. We started off by discussing her book, The Wrong Side of Eternity. And then we went to her other book, Michael and the Ice Princess, A Mystical Romance. Both of which, again, are available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her site, marymendenhalletc.net. Let's grow, let's develop, and let's educate ourselves. Mary, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Well, thank you for listening, Benji. And um, there's, like you say, what more could be said, but there's a lot more that could be said, but we're drowning in words already, so we'll leave it there. But thank you so much for your time. <laughs>